Okay, so we started off and I did one dimensional motion with no gravity and linear drag. So it's moving along this way and there's a drag force pushing back and that was the only force I can on it. And then I did a falling object with the with the upward drag force and, and we did that. So now what if I do like projectile motion? And so I call this quote projectile motion because I was always under the understanding that projectile motion meant that uh, it only had the gravitational force. So with air resistance, I don't know. We could, it, it's just it's just a name, right? So, but let's say I shoot this ball and there's a, a linear drag force on it, but I shoot it at an angle. So it has some initial launch angle at some velocity. So here is the forces on it. This is not a force. So I have the downward gravitational force and then I have this backwards pushing um, air drag force, which is in the opposite direction of the velocity. So let's just say this is Vx and that's Vy and then so this is going to be equal to I can write F drag as uh, negative B uh, let's write it as the vector Vx Vy 0 so and that's my vector notation so that means that F dx is going to be negative B Vx F D Y, D stands for drag, it's going to be negative B V Y. So now I can write two equations. I can write an equation for the motion in the X and the equation for the motion in the Y. So in the X direction I have F net Y X equals, well what force are acting in the X direction? It's just this. But that's only negative B V X equals M D V X D T. And I've already solved this problem. This is exactly the same as linear drag without air resistance. And so here, here is, that's what the solution is. And I, I know this is a solution because I also did this in Python with the numerical calculation. I got the same thing. So this is a solution. So the final, the X position is initial plus this, now this would be X velocity this would be uh, everything else would be okay and b is the parameter m is the mass so stuff like that okay now if i do the same thing in the y direction f net y i have uh, negative mg and then i have this drag force which is going to be negative b v y equals m d v y dt oh you know what I already solved this problem too. Okay, so this is the, I just did this problem. This is the uh, velocity as a function of time. I did this beforehand just because it was a little more complicated. Uh, and then I did, oops, sorry. This is the position as a function of time. So this would be y, y zero. Uh, this is the terminal velocity, uh, which is just a number. And this is the initial velocity in the x direction. Okay, so I'm done, right? I have these two solutions together. The X motion does not depend on the Y motion and the Y motion does not depend on the X motion. So uh, I can solve this. What if it's, it's complicated and I'm not going to actually set it up all the way. I'm just telling you how to do it. So let's say I want to find like the range, how far it goes. Well, I can solve, use this one and solve for the time it takes for y to get back to zero. So I can put uh, y equals zero, y zero equals zero, and then solve this for time. That's possible. It's not trivial, but it's possible, right? I can solve this for uh, this for t, okay? And then I plug that t in up here and I get the position. That's the range. So I'm going to do this numerically uh, because that's how I roll. I don't want to get bogged down in the algebra. I mean, it's the same thing. I hope I've shown that that's the same thing. Uh, and so that's what I will do next. Uh, there is the question of uh, what about quadratic air drag? And I'll do this as, as, a, as a story, and I'll talk about that next.